Do you know the importance of keeping your mouth shut? Do you have any idea how many people have ruined their own lives, futures, opportunities or dreams simply by not knowing how to keep their mouths closed? Some people get too excited when they're happy, spilling all their plans, sharing every detail of their lives, and then, when things go wrong, they don't understand why. Or those who lose their cool in a moment of anger and frustration and end up saying things they shouldn't. The key to changing this is learning to keep your mouth shut. Zeno, the founder of Stoicism, said that we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. We should listen twice as much as we speak. And in today's video, we'll study the practices that will make you grow in silence. But before that, I need to tell you, this video reached you only because someone before you subscribed to our channel, liked and left a comment. So do the same and don't break this chain. Learn to shut up. From the moment we are born, we are encouraged to express ourselves and our first words are celebrated by our parents or caregivers. However, few times in life do we learn that silence is also a powerful form of communication. Keeping silent can reveal a lot about you, your intentions and your personality, demonstrating respect for people and the environment. This can draw more attention than speaking incessantly or trying to convince someone who doesn't want to listen. When you talk too much, especially without purpose or clarity, you diminish your power. And instead of conveying the impression of authority on the subject, you have the opposite effect, causing others to respect you less and undervalue you. Exchanging the desire to speak for the desire to listen is the key to your personal growth. Happening in our social relationships, we can apply the stoic virtues of temperance and wisdom to improve and minimize many of our relationship problems. Consider the case of Carlos and Alex, both salesmen with different approaches. One talks too much and the other prefers to listen more. When a customer enters the store, Carlos immediately attends to him and offers discounts that the customer didn't even ask for. This causes Carlos to earn less commission. Often the customer didn't even want a discount and was ready to buy. But Carlos talks so much that he ends up making the customer give up the purchase. Alex, on the other hand, knows how to sell more and earn more. He also attends to customers quickly, but he does it differently. He listens more and speaks at the right time. Alex asks intelligent questions to find out what the customer really needs. Thus, he manages to sell what the customer wants and close many deals. As a salesman, the secret is to speak less and listen more. What the customer wants to hear more than speak not only benefits sales, but can also be applied to other aspects of our lives. A simple exercise for you to reflect on today. Remember three things you lost in life because you didn't shut up because you could have stayed quiet and couldn't control yourself. Just as a person developed the habit of talking too much and being a compulsive talker, they can develop the habit of learning to listen. Just as speaking less, Stoicism teaches us self-development and mental training so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. For this to happen, you need to be aware that the more you talk, the weaker you become. The more you listen, the stronger you become. For example, if Carlos used temperance, he wouldn't offer discounts right away. He would learn to wait a bit, see what the customer really wants before speaking. Temperance is like having a remote control for our reactions. It tells us not to overdo it either in speaking too much or acting on impulse. And wisdom is like having a map that shows us the best path to take. It helps us understand when and how to act or speak. Alex is already on this wave. He listens to the customer, asks intelligent questions, and only then offers what the customer needs. He uses wisdom to understand the right time to speak. A practical exercise we can do to help us speak less, have temperance and wisdom is anchoring. 
Anchoring is a powerful technique for creating and strengthening mental associations between external stimuli and internal responses. If a person is afraid of cockroaches, for example, just hearing the word cockroach makes them terrified and distressed, this is because they have created, through the word, a feeling of horror. The same goes for positive things. Think of chocolate, for example. If you like it, your mouth must have watered now. This can help us create mental associations that encourage silence. Start by choosing an anchor, whether it's a physical object like a wristband elastic or placing it at the bottom of your phone screen. Every time you pick up your phone or look at that elastic, you establish a connection between the anchor and a feeling of silence. That way, you teach your brain to associate the stimulus with the state of calm and silence. Do this several times to get the hang of it. Then, when you're in a conversation and feel like talking too much, use your reminder. This will help you stop, breathe and choose to listen instead of speaking. Remember that silence is a powerful form of communication. It can transform the way you interact with others. In addition to improving your listening skills, you may find that by speaking less, your words carry more weight and impact when you choose to use them. You'll be surprised at how much more you can learn and truly connect with others by listening more. Always remember this. Silence is your first language. Learn not to share your plans. Sit here, let me tell you about my project. Friend, I'm almost decided to start this and that. It's not 100% confirmed yet, but I'll share it with you. Sharing your dreams and projects before making them a reality may seem like a way to seek support and motivation, but it ends up being a self-sabotage. Something psychologists have discovered over time is that people who like to talk a lot about their plans before acting are the ones who accomplish the least of what they had planned. People who announce their plans to start their own business, change habits, write a book or get a new job, end up staying still in life for a long time without evolving or achieving anything they had talked about. This is because when we tell others about our goals, our brains release a satisfaction hormone and we feel as good as if we had actually achieved them. This can decrease your motivation to actually go after and make things happen. If you want to achieve your goals, keep this information to yourself and focus on taking the first step to make them happen. Additionally, Marcus Aurelius, one of the most famous Roman emperors and Stoic philosophers, warned us that when we trust someone without first knowing if that person is trustworthy, the mistake of naivety is ours. Sometimes, when we talk about our plans, even unconsciously, people can sabotage us. They may criticize or discourage our ideas, underestimate our ability, or even cruelly point out all our flaws. This often leads us to doubt ourselves and easily exchange our plans and projects for others' negative opinions. Understand that you can't grow anywhere in the world without being hated by those who are stagnant. When you remain silent, people don't know what your next steps are, and no one sabotages what they don't know exists. Seneca, a statesman and Stoic philosopher, wrote in his letters about friendship about the importance of carefully choosing who to trust your dreams with. A true friend, according to him, is someone who sincerely wishes for your success and with whom you can share your plans without fear. But not all people, sometimes even the closest ones, are like that. That's why it's important not to fall into the error of naivety and learn to assess the character of those who are worthy of trust. It's wonderful to share when something good happens to us or when we realize a dream, but it's necessary to understand for whom and when you can do it. Your victories will speak for themselves when they are achieved. Therefore, choose to share your dreams only with those who truly support and encourage you to go further. Keep your opinion to yourself. Stoicism offers a valuable perspective. 
teaching us to expand our view beyond our own viewpoints and to consider life in different ways. One of the most liberating lessons of Stoicism is the ability to choose not to express our opinion, to shield ourselves from the dictatorship of the response. Often, we are confronted with giving our opinion on subjects that are trending online with questions like, who do you think will win the Oscar this year? What do you think of the body of the artist who paraded in the carnival? What do you think of the most important topic of the week? Stoicism teaches us a powerful alternative. Silence or the conscious choice not to form an opinion on these subjects. As Emperor Marcus reminds us in Meditations, every minute spent caring about others' lives is a minute less dedicated to our own life and moral development. This philosophy can be applied not only in superficial discussions, but also in interactions with our circle of acquaintances. To judge them severely, this approach not only helps us cultivate a richer and more peaceful inner life, but also teaches us to value positive action over empty criticism, promoting an environment of support and mutual growth. When we realize that we can control our opinion, we understand that we can control what we say. Practice the skill of not thinking absolutely anything about a certain situation and accept this freedom that you don't need to have an opinion on everything. Any kind of reflection, and when confronted, justify your behavior by claiming to be sincere and honest. Victor Hugo, a French poet and novelist, once wrote that, Know that frankness does not consist in saying everything you think, but in thinking everything you are going to say. Being honest and frank has nothing to do with disrespect. Therefore, it is essential to establish clear boundaries in our relationships. Those who speak without thinking often end up saying what they shouldn't to those they shouldn't in inappropriate moments and places. There's a saying, everything has two handles, one with which you can handle it and one with which you can't. This means that there are things that Although we can't control others' behavior, we can choose how to respond to that behavior. When someone interferes too much in your life or says things they shouldn't, you can't control what that person does, but you can control how you respond. One approach might be to talk privately with the person, being honest and saying that you didn't like it. When it comes to gossip, there's a saying, someone made gossip in the house. If he made a moderate amount of gossip, I stay. If it's too much, I leave. If you act like this, this is the time to stop, review that attitude, and invest your time in your own development. You don't need to justify yourself. Silence carries such profound wisdom that at certain moments, it becomes the best response. Sometimes we feel the need to explain ourselves whether to seek acceptance, to please, or to create a stable relationship free from doubts. Things started to change for her. Over time, Vanessa realized she was being left out of new projects. Her colleagues, assuming she was in a better financial situation, started directing work opportunities that would have been for her to someone else. That is, the fact that Vanessa talked too much made her lose several jobs affecting her newly gained financial stability. Sometimes, we want to show others who we are. In this sense, Epictetus teaches us the importance of keeping some things to ourselves and not sharing every detail of our lives, showing that being discreet and keeping certain choices to ourselves can strengthen our character. You don't always need to explain your actions. Sometimes, being silent is the best response. Neither speaking too little nor speaking too much is ideal. Balance is the key. Speaking too little can close doors because people may think you're not interested or involved. And speaking too much can lead to unwanted consequences. As Plato said, when you're angry, count to 10. He realized he was so emotional that he couldn't handle the problem fairly. So he asked his servant to resolve the issue. 
This moment shows that even a great philosopher like Plato knew the importance of controlling emotions to make the right decisions. If you don't control your silence, you'll be a slave to your words. Some people, when they feel happy, talk too much and reveal their plans, which should be kept until they happen. Hurting the other won't heal your wound, it will only make it deeper. When you shut up and stay silent, it's important to understand that it's a valuable moment to absorb information and organize your thoughts before responding. Some experiences and feelings are meant to be processed internally, not expressed impulsively. Silence is a powerful tool. It provides space to absorb information, reflect and organize thoughts before expressing them. Staying silent allows us to exercise self-control. We often go around completely altered by our emotions and giving in to all our emotional impulses. When we practice silence, we have means to understand our own thoughts and emotions, leading to greater personal and spiritual growth. Growing in silence using Stoicism is a journey of self-improvement that teaches us the value of shutting up, listening more and deeply reflecting before acting. I confess that this is one of the most challenging Stoic practices for me, but the size of the difficulty also represents the size of the benefit in our lives. I have lost many things in life simply by not knowing how to shut up, so I sincerely hope that this video and historical knowledge bring this practice into your life. And if you've made it this far, comment gratitude now. To find out how to overcome four difficult situations in life, watch the video on your left. Thank you for watching.